Hey guys, so this is a cumulative effort between me, a few of my good friends, and peers. And also people from the Mighty Omega Info Discord server who have been sending me all these little skill squares. We could not have made this without them. Um, so I've assembled five people today, uh, including myself. These people are also Anflare. Yo yo! The Throngler. Hi! And also uh, Dana and Teo, who couldn't be here today, but here are their discords and everything. So uh, all five of us got together, we ranked all of these skills based on their current effectiveness in the current patch for September 2024. This may be outdated for the present day patch depending on when you watch this. We're going to be explaining why everything is where it is in order from F to S tier. If you want to skip to the very end for the finished tier list, skip to this timestamp, share it with your friends, do whatever. I don't care. Let's start with F tier. So to start off, Kikosho. It has good range but not enough stun to keep him in the entire attack at once once initially hit. It's not even true to itself. You can't rotate, it's essentially a free punish every time you use it. Cross counter. Counters are already pretty inconsistent, but cross counter having low damage and horrible recovery time, it's easily one of the worst counters in the game. Alright, so lightning legs combo. The tech, initially with this, right? Missing the final hit for a true combo on purpose as a true combo extender that no longer works because you can't rotate anymore. So the skill essentially just does low damage in exchange for being easily punished, making it really bad. Heart Jab. It does low damage with the effect to ragdoll for about half a second. The stall potential is not good enough to recover any stamina or health. Sumo Throw. Low damage, does it down, ragdolls, and dazes at 5 upgrades, but because of the ragdoll, the daze will only take effect for a mere moment by the time they get up. Looks pretty funny though. Ground Smash is extremely slow, extremely punishable it's easy to perfect block it can hit down people but that's like the only benefit it's good on a downstate build russian sickle low damage doesn't bypass guard and the end destination of the animation is not good enough to set up for follow-up combos or hits then there's spiral arrow which used to be very good for its high clash window but since that's been lowered is now just a low damage high range attack no redeeming qualities and then there's Sakaigen. It has some stun in the initial part of the attack to help guarantee the second attack lands, but it's, it's very slow and easy to punish, and the damage really isn't good enough to make up for any of that. And then there's Mida, which has almost zero stun after hitting somebody. And then, while well, landing it can usually result in you getting punished by M1s immediately after because of the low stun, and its only redeeming factor is the running speed buff granted on hit. That is literally it. Contrada. Counters are pretty bad typically, but ones that knock back on hit are especially bad since they're not even as rewarding. Contrada fits in this category, although it has a nice niche with its 5 upgrade effect draining stamina, it doesn't mix well with Kali Ka Kaliarnas as a kit. Because of it knocking back on the second hit of the attack, you can't follow up with the skill at all. So it can't be used to combo start at all, it can only be used to finish combos, and there are better moves in the game that do more damage than this. Even with the 5 upgrade effect, which gives a guaranteed dizzy on hit. Which sounds nice at first, before you realize there are other combo finishers that can also do this. Rushing Stomp. Dog shit, worst of the worst. Looks cool, but don't let its execution animation fool you. It never got its 25% damage buff on down targets, so it does middling damage as a combo ender and a downstate move. Awful as a get off me tool, due to its AoE hitting mainly in front of you instead of around you, even at max radius. 1 inch counter. Now that the M1 stacking bug with this skill is fixed, it's fallen into mediocrity, and as a counter, being mediocre among other counters makes it a horrible skill. And at the top of F tier, we have Elbow Blow. Since the nerf that removed this skill's ability to true combo extend, back when this was very meta, the initial hit doesn't even have enough stun to land the second in an actual power edit. So you're only landing this if your opponent is blocking both hits in which case they will be guard broken, but that won't happen very often. And the 5 upgrade effect of lowering opponent's defenses is nice, but it only applies on the second hit, and due to the unreliable nature of the skill, you're not going to be applying this effect very often at all. Now we're moving on to D tier. Starting it off, Razor Barrage. A barrage that does bleed and can bypass block at 5 upgrades, which is frankly worthless, because you're getting to be using this mid-combo anywho. Only just consider using this if you're going Razor's Edge. 
Surging Fist. While it's one of the best PvE skills in the game and one of my personal favorites, for actual player combat, it's a slow-moving projectile that's easily telegraphed and can be blocked, so it rarely hits. The percent damage that it deals is only ideal even when in Oni mode, and it's otherwise simply okay. Also, it can be very easily voided by hitting the player with any form of damage during the animation, cancelling it completely. It has a niche effect at times, where moving backwards while blocking the attack can do ridiculous amounts of drain, but it's impossible to intentionally trigger this effect during a fight. <laughs> this hitbox fucking sucks. Watch this shit. Hold All right, so piercing wave. This skill can be used for a very specific tech that allows the user to do a combo extension. Although it's not true, it can be completely negated by just blocking. And against someone who doesn't know this, you can use this to get free combos on them because it doesn't work on an informed victim, right? It's not foolproof as a skill. Lightning Counter. Similar to Contrada, but a tinge better. Has higher damage, can take Lightning Flash off cooldown, which is nice at 5 upgrades. Currently bugged though, making its recovery time twice as long! Sadly, this skill suffers from one issue, that being, it is a counter. Alright, Rising Uppercut. Looks very cool, does alright damage, uh, but there's already another flaming move that uppercuts, and counts as a grab, and does way more damage. Uh, it's also very punishable on a miss, and the class frames aren't as good as they used to be. Making this D tier. Alright, Vanishing Flat. It used to be very strong on launch, um, but it's become alright as of right now due to several nerfs. It's not awful. It's a hyper armor guard break, which is cool. Uh, good for muscles, but for leans, it's unreliable to, to the now slow startup. Breaker. Pretty low damage for a down grapple. Better than Crushing Stomp, though. The effect of increasing stamina drain on block is situational and not relevant for most fights. There are better options for down state attacks. With 5 upgrades, it debuffs the opponent's power gain by 30% for 10 whopping seconds, which is such a minor effect. This skill is useless in comparison to other down skills. Brute combo. This used to be so good. It's a hyper armor, 3 hitting skill that guard breaks on the third hit, which is cool until you consider it's one of the easiest perfect blocks in the game if you try to use it as a panic whiff tool. But uh, it does see some nice niche utility as a downed attack because it has high damage, but there are still better options than this skill. And then of course, uh, the downed options in question, Leg Breaker, slightly better damage than Arm Breaker with a slightly better effect of lowering running speed of those who are hit by it. Uh, but not by a huge amount, noticeable enough to make it good. But with 5 upgrades, it can disable dash, which is nice, but it is useless whenever your opponent isn't downed. You're also never landing this if they have their roll cooldown. You have to work around it a lot. Running Dropkick. Good mobility for muscles with a nice hitbox and range. The damage is pretty mid, and it has good turning speed, and it downs players when hit by the 5 upgrade effect. Which is nice for bur burning roll cooldowns, but there are a lot of better options for that. Dragon Claw. Used to be extremely meta when it was re released alongside with Kung Fu, being able to true combo into an M1 reset. The hitbox of this move is big and its end lag is very slow, is very low so it's hard to punish. It only serves as a safe move with the utility to down at low HP. There are better safe moves in the game though. Alright, and then we have Gyaku Gary, which is, you know, very mediocre as a combo finisher, but it's buffed by Kyokushin Karate. It's just overall meh. Followed by Shihozuki, which is basically the same thing. Um, it's very mediocre, gets buffed by Kyokushin. Uh, it's only slightly higher on the list because it has a special effect to drain power on hit, which the amount is very insignificant, so it's not very good for that e either. Hammer of Burma has a pretty solid AoE and it can guard break. It can even hit down players, but its decent damage leaves it, leaves it overall pretty mediocre as a downed attack and as a solid get off me tool. Flying Sidekick. Not a great guard break. It's got the range and the lunge and other attributes, uh, it's just lacking. The effect states here that it's got a chance to reduce the target's overall speed, chance of which in the amount is just not really known or calculated really, so the effectiveness is kind of up in the air. Then you've got Justice Beatdown. This, it serves a nice niche for proccing Absolution a lot for several Black Flashes. Other than that, it's a mediocre barrage attack that's not even 100% true within itself. 
just this counter. It's good in theory. A counter that lasts 0.67 seconds, while the recovery time is 0.6, meaning it's hard to punish on whiff, and if it lands, has a built-in hit and a combo. Despite this, it's still terrible because the hit never lands and the opponent will be far away from you, leaving you unable to follow up on a punish. Also, it's a, it's a counter, so it's ass. Razor Blitz. Pretty flashy move. By all accounts, it's actually pretty solid. Move which covers an AoE, inflicts bleed, and has invincibility on startup, and a strange hitbox which makes it difficult to guard, making it sort of a reversal tool. However, main fault is the fact that it is more punishable than it used to be due to its high end lag, while also having its own bleed cooldown making it hard to use in conjunction with other bleed moves. Thunderclap. Pretty powerful ability for Mikazuchis, having iframes at the beginning to help them and use it as a reversal tool in a pseudo-raging blow. Can actually be even used as a powerful combo finisher like Sunfire. It is, however, recently just got nerfed. It's now blockable and it's barely usable. Holding F at the first sign of danger makes you completely immune to the attack. Monkey Counter. Known as one of the best counters in the game for its high stat scaling and its ability to very easily combo start off of almost any attack. It's also notoriously used to counter Raging Blow. Uh, skill suffers from an issue, though. It is unfortunately a counter, which severely lowers its reliability as a whiff, which results in it being punished more. But it is probably one of the easiest counters to level up due to its multiple hits built in. At launch, Compact Half Moon came with a built-in lag switch, but nowadays it's an okay stun skill that does decent damage and gives extra rhythm at 5 upgrades. There are better stuns in the game though. Then we've got High Stick Shot, which it's a guard break with decent damage, and it also has the utility to dizzy on hit, and the strange effect to hit ragdoll targets, but it hits them with reduced damage. Uh, there are better guard breaks in the game, so it comes in at the bottom of C. And then there's Fluid Strikes the Kaliarna skill, it used to do really high damage, and it was really fast too on launch, but, you know, now it's been nerfed significantly weaker, significantly slower, and it serves as like a mediocre get off me tool for Kaliarna's builds almost exclusively. Then there's Psycho Crush, which used to have very high range and clashing, clashing frames, so it was like a really nice poke. Um, they've since been lowered. It can still guard break and it deals okay damage. It's not a horrible skill uh, overall, but there are skills that do what it does much better. Criminal Upper. The damage is alright. It's completely unusable for leans, but it has the u utility to be set up for possible combo extensions for muscle builds. And there's Gazelle Punch, right? Which has very high clash frames, but no iframes. It's not invincible. Uh, this is usually used as a poke for boxing builds, but it's since been power crept by a lot of other high range skills that have iframes, leaving it in mediocrity. Suppress Strad, RIP. The skill used to be extremely meta, but after a bunch of nerfs, it's very slow and its damage is lower than it used to be. It can still be used as a surprise guard break and has nice glass frames. It also serves as kind of a counter effect to Raging Blow, but it's since been power crept by a lot of newer skills. Yoga Flame. So. It does better percent damage than Surging Fist if every single part of it hits. And it actually has enough stun to keep the victim inside the attack for the whole duration. It's especially effective on muscle builds because of their high stun, but the nature of the skill is very awkward and kind of hard to use. Weave. Okay, this is a complicated one to talk about. I'd recommend you skip ahead if you don't care about this one. Hmm. Weave is a skill that was the very first counter introduced into the game with Abrol, and as such, it is probably the most tame and middling counter in the game without max upgrades. However, this is with 5 upgrades we're talking about. This thing gets the ability to give you half of your rhythm back, bonus damage on your next skill, halves its cooldown, which can go below the 20 second cooldown cap, gives more stamina back than it takes, takes two of your Abrol skills off cooldown, and lastly, the biggest thing, it changes three of Abrol skills into upgraded variants for the next 9 seconds. These skills will be talked about right now. Ultra Combination a souped-up six-hit combo that took every steroid in the book and juiced it into a blender, including the book. This thing does massive amounts of damage and is a direct upgrade to Jolt combo. Every hit in the six-hit chain is a guard break in the event you use it raw or the enemy walks out and tries to block. S tier. Jaw Splitter. I feel like Jawbreaker couldn't handle the loneliness of not being a stun skill anymore, nor a true reset without Jab Rush, so it proceeded to ditch its symbiotic relationship in pursuit of becoming something better all by itself. Not much to be said about this, powerful M1 reset that can hit like a goddamn truck will absolutely be your go-to after landing a weave and three M1s into the hyper jump combo. S tier. Ultraman Punch. Makes Superman Punch actually usable! 
by turning it into the very first non-clan exclusive teleporting dash, which is blockable but ragdolls for a second upon landing. Nothing much to it other than it boasts the highest damage out of all teleporting dashes in the game. And it also covers a pretty good distance too. It loses the ability to down low HP targets though, so keep that in mind. Move is great, but it suffers from the fact that you have to run Superman Punch, a skill which I consider not really useful, and is difficult to use by itself. So having to keep this skill in my back pocket for the luxury of a teleport dash, which only lasts 9 seconds on a good day when most of the time will have been chewed up by doing a jaw split or hypodrop combo, means I will have to almost certainly be using this skill right after I use all other three of them in a row like I'm a goddamn crackhead. Doesn't sound ideal for a slow style. A tier. Weave in addendum. Now, as great as all these benefits sound, one core issue. Trying to use Weave in a pure A Brawl build is a genuine chore. You have to land the dang thing in a fight. And it's not really a huge problem in and of itself, but it's a counter. And landing a counter in a fight, mainly endgame fights, are very difficult because they're fast-paced. Little to nothing has wind-up in it, and very little end lag, respectively, so it makes Weave, by extension, A Brawl, struggle a lot in the late game. The best you can do is try to predict them, which can be difficult due to Weave having a lowering collision box, making certain moves miss that otherwise wouldn't on other counters, which isn't really ideal. However, it's a problem, because Weave has changed since it first came out in launch, and it has changed in now. The buffs it's been given are great, and I absolutely love them, but you have to keep in mind Weave is a very difficult thing to work, so do keep that in mind if you're really wanting to run a pure Abrol. If you're not Abrol, don't run Weave. It's a pain to get 5 upgrades, but believe me, it is a genuine benefit with all of the other benefits that it comes with in Bundled, especially since it is the single counter that gets the most amount of upgrades out of any in the entire game. C tier. Triple Strike, right? It has high windup and decent damage, but the stun is sometimes just high enough to do a combo extension. But because of the finicky and unreliable nature of the skill, yeah, it's it's got high potential, but it's got to be right in the middle of the tier list for me. And then there's Thrilling Cut, right? The skill is hard to hit, and it has high end lag, but it has good damage. It has no hyper armor, though, so it loses to other skills in the, in the clash. Um, and it can only really be used as a combo finisher because of the bad base stats of the skill. 360 roundup. It deals high damage on a very highly telegraphed attack, but it seems lacking in most areas. The effect of 5 upgrades prevents it from being parryable, which is a nice effect to mitigate the high telegraph. The attack can still be dodged though, it however serves a nice niche as a true hit combo finisher for muscle build, dealing good damage. And then of course, there's Mantis Slash. Right, so this is a nice AoE attack, it's very safe and deals good damage. Because of its extremely low end lag and fast animation, you can throw this out and then dash away right after on a miss, and you'll be fine most of the time. Though not always. Jilt Combination! A good old classic 1-2-3. Nothing outrageous to be said about this, other than it's best used as an ender rather than something to throw out due to its high-end damage and telegraphy, making it easier to PB the last hit. Has hyper armor though, so you can get a bit of leeway if you panic and try to use it as a safe move. Yamatsuki, right? A generic guard break with a slight lunge, attributing to slightly higher range, with decent clash frames. Not bad, right? And it even reduces the target's power on hit, which is a very minor effect, but it can end your opponent's modes faster or prevent them from ever getting it, which is cool. White Fang! Surprisingly good combo ender. Both hits add up to pretty high damage, and with the added effect of guard breaking on the last hit, which typically wouldn't apply often, but the speed of the attack causes it to be more often catching people who might guard if it's not true. Kick Flurry. As a pure skill of Taekwondo, it deals good damage if, it, if every hit lands, but if you miss a kick mid-attack, it's not true anymore. Accidentally, on a whiff, it's extremely punishable, though that usually shouldn't be an issue because this should only be used as a combo extender, but if they do slip out, you're gonna get punished. Jawbreaker, an alright stun skill by all means. However, due to its innately low base range and range scaling, it makes it difficult to use as a poker combo starter. It used to be really good back in the day due to its high stun, and it would be used alongside Jab Rush, when it could, you know, reset M1s into a true combo. God, I hated those times. The move now finds itself being a mediocre stun skill that you're better off using in M1s to add extra damage to your combos, which, thanks to its recent damage buff, is somewhat viable and is no longer purely outclassed by other stun skills. Just be careful not to edit it too poorly in terms of damage due to it having the lowest minimum stun possible, and while not much, it does inflict dizzy at 5 upgrades. 
do what you will with this. Axe kick. I've been using this recently. It's a nice get off me tool and a guard break in one. It sees a nice niche as a raging blow counter in addition to these things and the five upgrade effect further bolsters the damage and range of this attack. It's pretty good, but it's very underused in builds, so its full potential is hard to measure. And I may, I may also add, with the right range, and yeah, a 5 upgrade effect, it has a matching range with Solid Strike. Very nice. Tiger Hunt. One of the better safe moves in the game. It can be used during a panic to swat your opponent away, and it can be used as a high damage combo ender, and the third hit can even guard break, which is pretty realistic given the speed of the attack. It also has a pretty low end lag, making it difficult to punish on a whiff. Alright, now going into B tier. Striking Palms. This is a pretty classic stun move for muscle builds and one of the essential skills to make a pure sumo build. Because muscle builds don't usually rely on stuns though, it's kind of in an awkward place for muscle builds. Blast Core. As a guard break with damage that's buffed by both muscle control and Kyokushin Karate, it sees some use in, on some unusual build. While the buff is given by muscle control, it's pretty mediocre, and the scaling on muscle damage partially takes up for it. The skill's true potential is brought out by using Kyokushin Karate, which it deals pretty solid damage. We've got Flying Teep. Now this has nice range and pretty good linger on an ability that puts Stamina Drain on pause. Which is good, right? But because it doesn't drain, it doesn't fight for the same utility as a Chest Thrust or a Liver Blow. But it's something entirely different, right? And that Stamina Pause Timer is 2 seconds at 0 upgrades, but 4 seconds at 5 upgrades. And then you've got Jab Rush. This ability, a year ago, would have been S tier. It has fallen from grace as one of the best skills in game. Now functions as additional damage after a stun, uh, making generic stuns deal higher damage if you land it. Uh, it's unable to true combo like it previously could, even with flash jabs. Fajin has high range, high frames, and can even guard break, which is a very nice combination of attributes. The damage is pretty low, but it has a very solid utility of disabling dash and debuffing mobility under 60% on lean targets, 25% if they're muscle. Speed of the skill comes out as fast, so that it's able to be landed after a 4th M1, granted you've got enough strike speed. Body Slam. Used to be one of the best grabs in the game, but it's now outclass. It saw use very frequently as a high damage grapple for muscle builds, but it slowly got power cut by new grapples that have better utilities. It gives a strange effect to give a huge rhythm gain when used on a target with mode activated, but that's not very important or influential during fights. And we've got the overhead counter, right? The pure boxing skill. It deals high damage, has good stun, but it does very little outside of that, you know? Due to the windup of the attack, it's a stun that can be used to combo start. It can only be used to combo finish or extend. And it's lost its ability to synergize well with Jab Rush due to all the nerfs that that skill took. So the skill isn't as useful as it used to be. It does have Hyper Armor at the start of the move, which is nice to help to land it. In neutral but there are way better skills in the game then there's mountain breaker a high damage combo finisher for kirei builds it's also pretty easy to land in neutral due to high range and hyper armor making it a safe move akin to tiger hunt but better the only difference is this likely deals way more damage it also has the interesting ability to deal additional damage to muscle builds jaguar bomb Pretty strange but effective ability, it's a grab but it doesn't bypass block when landed, but it deals pretty good damage and you can do things like shoot takedown right after, and this works on big enemies like Santa or fucking Globo Gym Guy. Piercing Elbow, this was actually nerfed last patch believe it or not. It's a high damage ability with knockback mainly used for the clash frames. They just got lowered though. And it has an ability similar to high kick where it can ship through block at 5 upgrades but the damage scaling on this skill is higher. Superman Punch. A mediocre skill turned good, and to dare I say, mid. While the lunge is useful and the unique ragdoll effect is cool, there isn't much that can be done or said to get up or trying to land an M1 combo. It's pretty difficult, thanks to the fixed lunge. Though it does inflict downstand at 80, rather than it's used to be 50, so it has some synergy with Crushing Stomp. That's just looking exclusively at it with A-Brawl though. It's got some decent synergy with other downstate inflicting skills, being that it downstates is not exclusive to April, which can lead to some very evil chains. High Kick. A high damage stun that's more used for the damage aspect than any of the stun, but because of this it doesn't count as a stun for the sake of stun decay, so it can be ran alongside other skills to have multiple stuns that are full power. Getting 5 upgrades allows it to chip through block, and with Karate, 
Solid Strike gives it the ability to do additional damage. Heal Thrust. This is a very good poke. It's rotatable and it knocks back and it does good damage. It's pretty reliable for follow-up attacks after an M1 combo too. And with its 5 upgrade effect with Taekwondo as the primary, it will reduce the target stamina regen, which is a small effect that contributes to the skill's usefulness. And then we've got Leaping Monkey. This is a very interesting stun, right? It's got two charges that can't be used consecutively, right? Only with five upgrades, with Capoeira, of course. Uh, it's got good stun and damage, and it has a chance to inflict Dizzy on hit. And if that second Leaping Monkey charge lands, it puts players into the down state, which is a really nice utility. And then we have Question Mark Kick, right? So this is the highest range stun in the game, easily. And it has nice damage and the powerful ability to guard bypass as a stun, which is very unique and, like I said, super strong. Corkscrew. Corkscrew is a guard break that's been buffed a lot recently. In its current state, it deals good damage, comes out really fast, and has some good range. And pairs with liver below pretty well. Corkscrew deals 25% additional damage on the target with 60% or less stamina putting the damage higher than most guard breaks in the game. The frame data on this skill still leaves a lot to be desired, though so the skill isn't perfect. Chest Thrust. So this is a nice skill. It pushes the opponent back, and it staggers their stamina. This attack is a nice deterrent for your opponent because of the high clash frames. It'll win against a lot of skills, and it can push your opponent back, drain their stamina, and additionally, pausing their stamina regen. It also has a very unique passive of dealing double stamina drain and not knocking back. Use three seconds after a parry or, you know, perfect lock, whatever you want to call it. Which doesn't see use very often, but, you know. This skill is only so low on the tier list because there are more effective stamina drain skills in the game. And then there's sidekick, right? This is a classic karate stun right here. It's a reliable skill with high range and stun on a decent cooldown. And the only lackluster part of the skill is the damage, but because it's used primarily as a combo starter, that's irrelevant to the performance of the skill. And Sidekick additionally gives more stun when used by a user of Karate, and it even gives another additional stun boost F5 upgrades, causing this skill to have some very powerful stun on him. Around the world! A strong stun with hyper armor and good range. Also deals some pretty good damage as a stun, and has a nice effect of giving additional rhythm on hit, similar to Hatsudo. Overall, it's very nice to have and works very well as a combo starter and reversal tool. Circular throw. And so, this skill is essentially a faster and spammier shoulder throw. With higher speed scaling and a lower cooldown, you can throw this skill out more often at the expense of less damage. With Judo as your style with 5 upgrades, it deals additional weight based damage for heavier damage against muscle builds, and this skill technically has higher damage per second than shoulder throw. And then you've got Tiger Bite, right? Tiger Bite, the pure skill of Muay Thai, has high range, and then when incorporated with a dash, it has higher range. It also deals nice damage while guard breaking. Overall, it's pretty useful for putting pressure on your opponents. Sickle Sweep. You know, it has pretty solid stun, even with a recent patch lowering the stun on this skill, it can still be used to slow your opponent and deal really good damage for a stun, and opening them up for an M1 combo. I'd say it's even stronger in application with a Judo user using the skill with 5 upgrades to immediately grapple afterwards. Doing this allows the user to do 3 and one sickle sweep into any of their grapples. This gives the combo a ridiculous amount of damage. Crouching Dragon deals ridiculous damage with iframes in the beginning, making this a very nasty reversal tool. Landing a backstab with the Gauss style can enable this skill to be completely uncounterable, which isn't extremely useful because who the hell is countering a skill that comes out this fast? And then we're just gonna go straight into A tier. Razor Blitz with the Fallen Mask. Alongside of letting you act like everyone's favorite blob, the variant of this skill is stronger than its base warp counterpart. It hits slightly faster, so it's more airtight for people trying to escape, and it also doesn't knock back at the end of the attack. Although, it's not a true combo extender every single time. This can result in the user getting hit depending on whoever hits the player first. It's awkward, but it can be really useful if you get lucky enough to get the Sakuna Mask. Moonsault. A very powerful option as a downed attack for muscle builds, while simultaneously having good enough damage and range to be a nice AoE defensive skill as well as a combo finisher in a pinch. 
has a special effect to deal 50% additional damage on down targets, which is really good for wrestling builds. Flying knee, right? So flying knee is a guard break with great range and damage, but its effects make it stellar. At five upgrades, it bolsters the damage of the ability, grants it the ability to hit down targets with no damage reduction, and disables both the stamina and rhythm regen. This is a dangerous combination of effects for an already great skill, right? Then there's Lightning Flash, right? This, everything about this skill is great, except for stun, uh, but it comes out unreactably fast, and it hits from very far away, and it deals great damage. It also has a reliable combo out of Thunderclap that hits almost always. It also has a nice niche ability to auto-execute a low health target at 5 upgrades for wars. Shoulder throw. One of the most reliable grapples in the game. Deals a lot of damage, and even more damage if you're a fat ass. It has insane iframes, stupid iframes. You can tank whatever's being thrown at you, throw them, and deal good damage. Especially with Conditioned Hulk, you can reset two of your moves off of this very easy to hit grapple. And with five upgrades with Judo, it does even more damage. Double Stingray. So, this is slept on a lot. It's one of the most versatile guard breaks in the game. It comes out extremely fast, has a hitbox that's very easy to hit with heavy linger, right? With hyper armor, it can even go through most attacks and it applies a dastardly effect. With five upgrades, this skill puts the opponent's stamina pause on a five second timer, making it more effective as a stamina pressure tool than flying teep. Razor Slash. Recently saw a nerf that lowers its damage, but this only applies to players not using Razor Style. Congrats to you three who exist out there. For you guys, this skill is a strong stun that applies bleed, comparable to Root Cutter. Skill isn't that effective though when outside of the style, so keep that in mind. Devil Lance, right? This skill functions as a stun, with pretty generous stun actually, but the damage is very insane, that's why you use the skill, right? Functioning as a stun, it gives the user the capability to combo, start with the skill, and land 4 M1s after. Right, which is good damage, not to mention, right, while the skill's base damage itself is pretty lackluster, the real damage comes from its bleed ticks that chip at the victim's health bar with percent damage. The ticks deal 1.75% of their entire health bar, right? And with 4 ticks from a karate user, this will chunk health bars so easily. Root Cutter! The skill has a big and wide hitbox that's easy to hit and comes out fast enough to integrate it during combos with ease. Deals good damage, and also has bleed ticks, so it's versatile as a stun and damage dealing tool. But, if you are feeling a bit risky, if you get this up to 5 upgrades and have Gao, it'll bypass block. Liver blow, right? This is the more offensive version of Chest Thrust. It's a skill that deals higher damage, has a lower cooldown, and it doesn't knock back, so it can be used as a combo starter, and not exclusively as an ender like Chest Thrust. It shares the same ability to drain stamina and put stamina on a pause, making it slightly better due to that shorter cooldown and higher damage per second. Party Table, the pure skill of Capoeira, it may be possibly the strongest safe skill in-game. It has complete iframes throughout the entire duration and low end lag so you can dash out once it ends. Because of the nature of the skill, it's very easy to punish against slow attacks, right? While also being good for just being thrown out as a panic whiff. The attack in its full duration lands for 15 hits and it's very rotatable with a good hitbox. There's also a tech involved uh, where the user can turn around during party table to manipulate the knockback, and you can actually use it to combo extend, but this is a lesser known tech. God Glow. Normally a pretty lackluster ability, but it's buffed under the usage of boxing or Muay Thai with primary styles and with three skills in each respective style. This is the chunk that takes out 9% of your opponent's health with a drawback of slight recoil damage but the recoil damage is negligible in comparison to the benefits. Solid Strike. So this skill right here, it's a huge damage dealing guard break. And when I say huge, I'm talking about the range. That range is ridiculous. It comes out slightly slow, but the benefits outweigh that drawback. Having five upgrades gives it slight hyper armor in the beginning of the skill, while disabling the enemy's ability to block for four seconds. This allows the user to power through enemy attacks, whack them with this skill, make them temporarily very vulnerable to whatever attacks you want to throw out at them next. However, it gets voided pretty easily, which is probably the most 
important drawback. And then, of course, there's Tatsumaki. This actually just received a little nerf as well. Uh, it used to have some of the highest range in the game with ridiculous height scaling that made it super easy to hit, but with that nerf, not so much. Uh, it still stands as a pretty good poke with great damage and good clash frames, though. Spin Kick! Another stun with quite a bit of stun on it. Deals great damage, has iframes on startup, with the 5 upgrade perk being Taekwondo's ability to turn around attacks on the opponent. Uh, suplex. After the recent buff on Suplex, it's become super strong and really versatile for wrestling build. This attack has strong hyper armor and damage that puts the opponent in the down state. But the best part about this skill is that at 5 upgrades, the user can reset their chain suplex cooldown, allowing them to get evil. Alright, let's finish this out with the best skills in game. Here's our S tier. Shoulder Bash. A really stupid mobility attack for muscle builds. It deals good damage and is one of the few high range pokes for muscles in a game. On 5 upgrades, it becomes unparryable, but right now this shit doesn't work, so... And with the slow nature of muscle builds, having an attack like this is really, really good. Soft Strike, the equally powerful variant of its cousin Solid Strike. It's so powerful because this is one of the few percentage-based skills in the game that's actually editable in terms of damage. Meaning, with the right edit, this thing can do ridiculous amounts of damage, and it goes straight through block. And, if, fun little fact, if you're a Gao and you backstab somebody with this thing, you even get a little bit of iframes on it as well. Just be careful if you try to give this a power edit. If it's too slow, it won't be true. And there's everybody's favorite own move, Raging Blow. Right, so, this skill needs no explanation for why it's so high on the list. It is a skill so powerful, it created a meta based on countering it. The user throws themselves at the opponent from a ridiculous range, guard breaking, dealing good damage in the process, and the iframes on this attack give it an iconic feature as a counter against most attacks. The only, only unfortunate thing about this ability is you're always going to run into someone with counters for it because it is so powerful in a vacuum. It also recently just got a change that increases the stun in exchange for reducing the hitbox of the attack. So Raging Blow users need more skill to land their attacks now. Knuckle Blast. Really, really, really good pure skill. High damage, guard breaking reversal tool that has invincibility frames on the singular one. It is actually insane. Throw this out during a combo. During a whiff, during a wedding where you're not nominated best man. You can use it anytime and it is great. Edit this bad boy as a power edit or spam edit to maximize damage or speedrun being a genuine nuisance. Just don't overestimate its range or lack of end lag. Elbow cut. This is one of the best stuns in the game for a reason, right? Even when compared to a pre-nerf jawbreaker, this was considered a direct upgrade in comparison to it. The hitbox for this skill is huge and easy to land, which pairs well with some of the best stun on any stun skill in the game. It also has the devastating and unique ability to have a chance to drastically increase the next skill's damage, which piles on even further damage when ending the combo you started this skill with. Lion Bite, an insane teleport dash attack with dumb amounts of stun. Techs have risen to use this thing after M1s and incorporating an M2 at the end of a combo leading to flashy high damage combos that mangle the opponent. So it can be used from range as a nice combo starter to get some M1s in, and it may genuinely be one of the best options to use in wake up from the down state, as it comes out instantly and shoots very far while stunning your opponent for a free combo. What if I told you it could get worse though? Now you look me in the eyes and you will never experience true fear as I have with twin dragons. Fighting a Gao at low HP, knowing that they have this thing is horrifying, because you'll blink and you're on the floor. This thing does two ticks of bleed at 5 upgrade and it guard breaks, which means it knocks back on hit. Unlike other Clan TB Dash cousins, this gives a massive amount of pressure in a fight just by it existing. Most TB Dashes, however, can be countered by blocking, so keep that in mind with this in comparison. Has decent average land lag though, so be careful about whiffing it. Iron Boulder, one of the best skills in the game. Iron Boulder gives wrestling users a whopping 50% damage reduction and allows you to reverse some of the damage onto your opponent. Because the skill currently has no animation, it's pretty sneaky when activated, 
someone could attack the user and have no idea that they're hurting themselves until their health bar is gone. This can technically be counter boulder user and seeing if you're taking any recoil damage and responding by just waiting their iron boulder out, but it gives the iron boulder user a chance to go on the offensive, so there's really no drawback to using iron boulder. Supreme Fang! A very similar ability to Hasudo in the sense that it's a big kick with iframes that guard breaks on hit. What makes this skill better, in a sense, is that all the damage comes out in one hit and the user doesn't have to move by default, making it a simpler hit. The technique loses out on some range for this though compared to Hatsudo. It also has an added effect of knocking an opponent into downstate when hitting them at 30% or less. Hatsudo, this is the own clan's second iconic skill, right? So, it comes in the form of a two hit, high damage, high range guard break with iframes throughout the entire skill. This means it can be used to counter the iconic raging blow and a plethora of other attacks as well. Uh, the range of the skill makes it an excellent poke to stop your opponent's health regen. Uh, and also, applying pressure, it runs straight through guards. So it's not impossible to parry this though, so you can't be too obvious with your approach. The strange movement of the attack though with the lunge and the damage split up into two attacks can make it kind of dicey. The user might not land both hits, you might lose damage if you don't aim this properly. Rising Talon, one of the highest damage skills in the game when edited correctly, kind of like Slam Buster or Crashing Force. The only difference is that it has no recoil and it's usable by both muscle builds and lean build. They recently changed the knockback so it fires the opponent away, kind of like Dragon Claw, so it doesn't give a good setup into shoulder throw like it used to, but strangely enough, it also procs with calculated strikes, which makes it into an extender. Really high damage grab for lean builds. Ice Slice. So, Ice Slice? For a guard break, this skill really has so many benefits. It can be used seamlessly in an afro dash, it will blind you, it will disable your dash, it deals 3 bleed ticks on top of very good damage, right? For this reason, it's one of the heaviest effect skills in the game, and it can leave your opponent in shambles, man. Crashing force, headbutt straight from hell. A combo ender grab that does insanely good damage at the cost of taking away all your money and 55% of the damage you dealt to the enemy. Resets both you and your opponent's healing when landed, so don't so be pretty careful about using this if you're low or you're trying to get some HP back. So don't use on this on someone with iron bullet or equipped. It will literally make you take more damage than you do to them. Slam Buster. Imagine if you could, you know, do the damage of crashing force without taking any damage back. That's the kind of skill you get if you, once again, drop four million dollars, and if you already don't have it, nine million dollars on editing Slam Buster to a high muscle build damage. I was skeptical that this skill could ever be good, but, you know, I saw a clip of someone doing 500 damage, so that's ridiculous. Shiyama counter. This, the pure skill for Judo, is simultaneously a ridiculous damage bomb, and it's a counter that can be procced by almost anything in the game, including grapples, and it can even send the opponent into the down state. This ability absolutely shreds muscle builds, which hurts even more because of the 5 upgrade effect on the skill that increases the weight base damage even further. Dread Dust, the best poke in the game. It comes out frame 1, hits from super far away, it's a guard break that deals great damage and it blinds the opponent. This makes it super strong when throwing it out literally whenever you want. It's even fast enough to be used after a 4th M1. Going from God's strongest dust, we now have his strongest sunfire. This has to be the highest damage skill for lean builds. It drains power on hit, gives the opponent dizzy, and it's unparryable. Also has a very easy bread and butter combo with Thunderclap that I mentioned earlier. The power drain on the skill is also severe to the point that two Sunfires can take somebody right out of mode. This is easily one of the best skills to take in the game and is essential for any Mikazuchi build. Snakebite, a skill that has recently been recognized in the community as a pretty good one after its change from a guard break into a combo extender, or stun skill. It's got hyper armor in its startup and a big hitbox, which makes it a nice reversal tool while also dealing good damage and stun. Deals great damage when using Kung Fu, as it additionally adds two ticks of bleeds for a little bit of extra damage. The skill oh, also good. functions like a counter if it didn't have any end lag. It can reverse most attacks except for super armor breaking abilities. Overall, it's functionally different stun with several applications and high performance. Roundhouse kick, right? This and its perfect counterpart make up the best lean stuns in the game. This skill has four charges and can chain together with decaying stun with each consecutive roundhouse. 
the initial kick can be treated as a normal stun, with the remaining three is just functionally better M1s and combo strings. Uh, the primary difference between this and Perfect Roundhouse is that it can be put on a range edit, which makes it easier to combo start with in comparison. And those three M1s, after the first, don't abide by global skill cooldown. Right? So, those other three roundhouses can be used after any stun for nice damage. Perfect roundhouse. Similarly to the standard version, right? This can be chained four times, but it has significantly better stun and damage than its counterpart. And because the base range can't be changed, it's more effective as like a combo extender. And with enough stun, it can chain all four together for a true combo extension sometimes. Dealing an immense amount of damage. Also, it procs Absolution pretty often because of the several hits. Brain Stance, the pure skill for Kung Fu, has recently been nerfed slightly. Previously, any edit of this skill, including very spammable cooldown edits, could be used to get true combo extensions almost every time. Now that edit is very dependent on the user's high investment in the power stat to get stun required for the true combo extension. This has made the skill slightly weaker, but it's still very strong. And then that's going to be immediately followed by the pure skill of Kali Arnis, right? So, this used to do ridiculous true combo extensions akin to pre-nerf jab rush. And the skill itself can land twice back to back and chain back into more M1s for a true combo extension. It's essentially crane stance, but it deals damage. It also has three charges, so... It can recover itself without waiting for the entire cooldown to reset, meaning use two continuous slashes and wait six seconds. You have your skill back like it never left. Very good. All right, muscle heads, eat your heart out because we're getting to the end of the tier list. Floorquake, the pure skill for sumo and the strongest stun in the game. With a massive AOE slam around the user, they stun anything and everything around them long enough to hit them. This skill's true strength comes in the form of a free true combo extension for muscle builds, Bear Hug. Bear Hug is the best powerful stamina skill in the game. Goes straight through block and has hyper armor as a grapple. If you're running sumo, this skill comes out even faster for free, making it even easier to hit. With all those effects, once the victim is grabbed, they are drained by 30% of their stamina and suffer a 35% stamina regen debuff for 14 seconds. But this skill becomes extremely broken with Gorilla Grip. The 30% stamina drain becomes significantly higher. This changes the game into a, a fight against the person, into a fight against your own stamina bar. And changing the win condition of a fight is one of the strongest things you can do in Mighty. Shoot Takedown. Easily the easiest grapple to land in the game. It comes out fast and goes further the slower you are. So a muscle build can leap across the entire arena to land this attack. It also has hyper armor, so there's not much stopping it while it's on its way to tickle you. Once it hits, you have a second of ragdoll followed by the down state. The damage of this skill is irrelevant because it, it should be ran on a cooldown edit and spammed every 20 seconds. This is an excellent bread and butter combo for the next skill on the tier list. Chain Suplex. Chain Suplex is easily the best ground grapple in the game. It deals amazing damage and if they lost their roll cooldown along the way, it transitions straight into free M1s. Using this conjunction with the previous mentioned suplex and its ridiculous effects, this build and its skills are very prominent in the muscle meta right now. And we're left with Vanishing Combo, which just got deleted last patch. It no longer exists. So oh we can't God. even rank it. They, they oh straight no. up they straight up Take got rid that. of it. Oh, oh my no. god. They straight up we got rid of it. If you're skipping to the very end, here's the full tier list. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any issues with this, feel free to fight about it in the comment section. Cause I'm gonna be answering you and I'm gonna fight like hell for my opinion but you know with that being said uh feel free to share this around if you'd like yeah. it's gonna be posted to the mighty omega info discord server uh we worked very hard on this uh this very. is actually I think we've been working on this for almost I think a, few a month it feels yeah, like yeah, it's been a month, month. It well because like we had to month. wait for uh for throngler so yeah that, that, it made that's, it take that's longer. my bad it took no, like a oh, month no, it's all good yeah, it took like a I've been month. everywhere. And this is the second recording, too. The like, first one was four hours long. It was four oh hours long, God. and half the audio didn't work. So, yeah, this is <laughs> the... you wouldn't be able to, You wouldn't even hear Zen. You were just going to hear me. I was silent there. the whole time. Yeah. You're going to gonna listen to a video without Zen the Edgy on a Zen the Edgy channel. Could you imagine yeah. that? Yeah. But anyway, you guys wouldn't be able to hear your glorious king. 
Uh. This is the fixed <laughs> version. So we hope you liked it a bunch. Mm hmm. You know, that being said, you know, we hope you have a great rest of your day, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye forever.